and welcome back Southwest Florida. Before we get started with this distinguished gentleman, we're going to have our cameraman just sort of pan around slowly so you can just kind of see the majesty of all that is happening here. People are filing in here to Hodges University at the annual Amuja Night of Enchantment. Uh, I'm so fortunate I'll be the master of ceremony tonight. LaVon Sims, uh, councilman, will be the keynote speaker. And Lee Pitts Live is a media sponsor. It's taking place right here at Hodges University in Fort Myers. And if you talk about Africa in Southwest Florida or anywhere in the state of Florida and you want to have an expert around the field, African art and the like, you have to go to the source. And we have the source right here. Uh, in his wonderful outfit. Let's pay in his outfit and we'll talk to Mr. Ladovi Kimmer, an ed a renowned educator. Tell us what you're wearing, Mr. Ladovi Kimmer. Well, I have on a grand booba, the top part. Under this is a shirt, which is called the booba. The pants are called a shokoto, and the hat is called a kufi. Okay. And now, it's what a king would wear in Africa. What a king would wear in Africa. Now, an event like tonight kind of capsulize why something like this is so important to the community and why you felt it was important that you donate some of your art to this event? Well, we're African people. And as African Americans, many of us have become disjointed with African culture. And if we're going to survive, and even indigenous Africans who move here, African Americans and Caribbean Africans have to come together because our cause is a common cause. Tell us about the art. Well, um, I love African art. You know I used to own Inter-Africa Art Gallery. Peter came to my house and says, Mr. Kimball, can I have art? And I brought art, and I set the place up with art. It looks great, man. Now, the African art in general, uh, Ladovic, why is it important, particularly for people of all cultures, to have African art in their home so that children can grow up seeing those types of images? Well, one thing, as African people, we should have things that represent us and our houses take pride in who we are. Plus, just like other cultures who make contributions to the world, we've made them too from the beginning of time. You'll find them coming from the diaspora. You will find them created by African Americans and you will find art coming out of the Caribbean created by African people that shows the creativity of other people and also represents our culture. I noticed that uh, here in America, you basically cannot go anywhere in any major metropolitan city without seeing African art seeing African art shops and so on and so forth. Why has African art, you think, become so popular here in the United States? Well, African art is very unique, and not only that, if we go back and look at a lot of things in European culture, a lot of things that Europeans claim actually come from African art. Uh, Picasso, for example, a lot of his masks come from masks that he copied from West Africa. The story of Rapunzel is the story of the doomed prince out of Egypt. The Washington Monument is the lost penis of Osiris. So let me get started about all the symbols in this country that Europeans claim to be theirs that are truly African. Well, let's, let's go down that road for a second. Uh, tell us about when you move around here in America and talk to various people in America, what are some of the big misconceptions about Africa that you can, uh, maybe two biggest misconceptions that you hear or, or notice that you can dispel right now? Well, one thing when looking at academic achievement of Africans in this country, people often want to suggest that it has something to do with culture. But if you look at African people who come out of Africa that don't have, have not been exposed to bondage like us, of all the internationals who come to this country, indigenous Africans are more likely to get a high school diploma and a PhD. That says who we are. And if they can do it, then our young African people can do it too with the eradication of racism and poverty that restricts them from achievement. And you usually find them with some of the top GPAs, grade point averages at our high schools and universities. Elaborate on that. Well, not only that, we look at our kids. We often, our media elevates the negative, what's going on in our community. They often don't talk about the young African scholars in our community that they're doing. So not only do you find many indigenous Africans in college doing well, you find African American, African Caribbeans who achieve just as well as anyone else. And in fact, this room is full of scholarly people. Mm -hmm. And I think we represent the scholars of our community. And you remember in segregated schools, when you were taught by all black teachers, you were taught by black scholars. That's right. Mr. Ladovic Kimmel, always here to uh, share uh, some, some, some words of wisdom. Uh, we got about 30 seconds, Mr. Kimmel. We'll get him to tell us, summarize what we really need to know about Nelson Mandela and what he contributed to this society. Well, N Nelson Mandela will be considered the great world peacemaker. 
And I think he sets a real example that he did not come out with an attitude of revenge. He had that attitude to compromise, to bring peace to South Africa. The best thing we can do with Nelson Mandela is to emulate Nelson Mandela and walk in those shoes. All those are some big shoes to fill. You heard it right here from Mr. Africa himself, Ladovi Kimball. We'll be right back on Lee Pitts Live. Good job, man.